Welcome back to another advanced module breakdown. My name is Alex and today we're going to be going into moldx 3 ds FEA interface. Finite Element Analysis or FEA, sometimes called FEM for Finite Element Method, is a computational method used to predict how a part responds to external factors such as forces, pressures, vibrations, fatigue, and many others. For commercial and structural parts, FEA is typically used to study how much stress a part can experience before failure. During the plastic molding cycle, the mechanical properties, primarily the material's elastic modulus, will change based on the molding-induced residual stresses. Residual stresses are held within the individual molecule chains as the polymer matrix goes from the molten state to the solidified state and begins to shrink. This residual stress held within the material can be dependent on many factors including the molecule type, pressure and temperature conditions during the molding cycle, fiber orientation, weld line strength, and many other environmental factors. moldx 3 ds FEA interface is an add-on module and can be found over in the result tab after the simulation has been run. Once we get to the result tab, we can go all the way to the right side where it says FEA interface. And when you open up the FEA interface, you'll see the first thing is the stress solver. We have many different stress solvers available in moldx 3 ds FEA interface, including ANSYS, Abacus, Nastran Add-ins, LSDyna, Mark, Optistruct, and ANSYS Workbench. The element type will be customized based on the type of output that you want. In the case of ANSYS, we have two different element types that we can export. The output mesh as dropdown allows us to select what type of output we want to create. The default here, original, allows us to output the boundary layer mesh from moldx 3D into the FEA software. Deformed allows us to export the deformed boundary layer mesh from moldx 3D into the FEA software as well. The third option, mapped, allows us to take the moldx 3D output and map it onto a mesh from ANSYS or whatever stress solver you'd like to use. The mapped option is the most recommended because you're able to use the element type that is preferred in your FEA software. In the case of the boundary layer mesh, we use two different element types. The first of which is a prism element in the boundary layer regions, and the second is a tetrahedral element in the middle of the mesh. Tetrahedral elements are nice because they are flexible. Prism elements are great from a flow computation standpoint, but aren't really that good from a structural simulation standpoint because the element is so rigid. In order to do any sort of deformation analysis, the structural solver would have to deform these elements, which is quite difficult. The mixed element type approach that moldx 3 d uses can be simulated in an FEA software, but using a pure tetrahedral mesh, which is the preferred meshing style from the FEA solvers, is going to be the recommended procedure for using moldx 3 ds FEA interface. So just as a quick recap, you would run the simulation just like normal in moldx 3 d using a boundary layer mesh. Then in your FEA software, you would create your tetrahedral mesh. Then using the moldx 3 d FEA interface, you would use the output mesh as, and you would use the mapped option. The mapped option would allow you to select the mesh file that you've saved from your FEA software. Once you've imported the mesh file, the information from moldx 3 d is going to be mapped onto that structural mesh where the material reduction is going to be executed. The type of output from the FEA interface can vary based on the information that you check down at the bottom. There are a lot of options here, so let's go through them. The first option is the micromechanics model. Micromechanics refers to the mechanics of a small microstructure of the material, rather than observing the properties of the larger macrostructure. This allows us to divide each element up into their own material cards, giving a more realistic anisotropic modulus distribution to be sent off to the FEA software. This is particularly useful for filled materials where the fiber orientation or the orientation of the individual rigid fibers throughout the part geometry would impact the shrinkage and therefore the residual stress and therefore the material modulus in each axis across the different contours of the part geometry. For the FEA interface, we always use the Mori-Tanaka model, 
as it is the best micromechanics model that we have available to us. The second option is only available for a simulation that's been run with a fiber orientation analysis. Material reduction of fiber orientation refers to what I mentioned earlier, where the output from this feature summarizes all these factors by creating an anisotropic material card, which has varying modulus information in each of the x, y, and z directions. This material reduction is going to be grouped based on a range of properties and will reconstruct the final part geometry. The level of material reduction you do opens up or closes down the range of material properties used across the model. This will significantly reduce the size of the output from the FEA interface if you use a higher level reduction. If you use a lower level reduction, then there will be more material cards created across the part geometry and will offer a more diverse material data card set. For runner output, we typically exclude the runner from the export into FEA. However, if you think the runner is going to impact the stress on the part geometry, then you may want to include it. Flow-induced residual stress output refers to the residual stress component created by the flow of the material. As the material flows through the part geometry, the individual polymer chains will be stretched out, and the inability of those polymer chains to return back to their original state will be stress held within the geometry. The flow component of residual stress is automatically considered in the warpage analysis, however it can be exported as a separate component. The initial stress output outputs the six components to the stress based on the temperature change alone. The initial strain output exports the strain component due to the volumetric shrinkage because of temperature change alone. The packing phase temperature output exports the temperature distribution over the part geometry after the packing stage. Same thing with the end of cooling temperature output, but that is at the end of the cooling stage. The micromechanics interface is when we start talking about the micromechanics of the individual molecules throughout the part geometry, rather than the macro structure. The first component to the micromechanics interface is the weld line output. The weld line output allows us to study the impact of the weld line on the final structural properties of the part geometry. As a weld line is created, the two melt fronts can either merge with one another or just meet one another. The ability of the two melt fronts to interact with one another will determine the ultimate strength of that weld line. The weld line output allows us to reduce the mechanical properties of the part geometry based on the strength of the weld line. And we can see the max weld line angle shown here. The weld line angle refers to the angle at which the two melt fronts come together. The larger the angle, the more ability the two melt fronts have to interact with one another. The smaller the angle, the more directly those melt fronts are coming up to one another and therefore the weld line is going to be weaker because the melt fronts aren't able to interact as much. Fiber orientation refers to the orientation of the individual rigid fibers throughout the part geometry. The orientation of those fibers will impact the mechanical properties in not only one direction, but all three primary direction components. The residual stress output from the micromechanics interface is an output of the flow-induced residual stress and the thermally-induced residual stress in the part geometry. These two residual stress components will combine and give us a good indication of the general part strength. The temperature output will be the output of the temperature results at the end of the cooling stage, but can be imported as a non-linear material model in contrast to the previous output, which would only be a linear temperature output. The density output allows us to export the material's density as a distribution across our part geometry. The weld line output setting allows us to apply a different material reduction based on a range of weld line angles. The part insert section will only be available for geometries for simulations that include a part insert attribution. 
And on the part insert, we can export the flow pressure output. That is the pressure exerted by the flow of the material onto the part insert geometry. The second output part insert and temperature output allows us to export the temperature of the part insert at the end of the cooling stage. The fiber material property output allows us to export any sort of fiber orientation result on the part insert, and this would only be applicable for a two-shot molding analysis. The final section mold base allows us to study the mechanics in the mold base itself. We can export the mold base mesh. We can export the pressure exerted onto the mold base and we can export the temperature exerted onto the mold base. Down here at the bottom, you can choose where to output this information. By default, the information will be output to the report folder of your simulation project. Running a part through FEA without first applying the real world molding conditions can lead to inaccurate data because the molding cycle causes the mechanical properties to vary across the part geometry. The output from MoldX3D's FEA interface summarizes all these factors by creating an anisotropic material card that is a new material data set with a varying modulus in each of the X, Y, and Z directions. And this will be captured for each individual element in our model. These material cards are grouped based on a range of properties and will reconstruct the part geometry that would be imported into an FEA simulation software. This newly constructed model is a much better representation of the actual molded part than just using a perfectly isotropic or a uniform material property part geometry, and therefore gives a more accurate data to what would be observed in the real world testing condition. Thank you for watching this advanced module breakdown and go beyond simulation with Moldex 3D.